is using modern technology to encourage more young people to take up lace making and to make it more accessible to people with limited sight or use of their hands. Louise, welcome to the show. Thank you. First off, thank you for bringing in all this incredible lace. Small collection. Yeah, but what is it that drives you to do this to begin with? I get a, a pleasure from actually making it, but I also get the pleasure from teaching it. Mm. And through the years of teaching it, I've noticed the difficulties that people are actually encountering in the preparation stages of yeah. the lace making. Talk to us about some of the, the difficulties that people can face and how you've helped people overcome that. Well, for instance, to start off making a lace, you've got to prepare the pattern, which involves pricking through the card individual holes and then marking it up. Mm. And a pricking like this might take three or four hours to prepare and you make mistakes. I'm an experienced lace maker and I've still made mistakes on it. Yeah. And this is one of the problems I'm seeking to address with the current project. Um, it's a very time consuming process and a lot of people are put off yeah. doing it because of that. And also you've got younger people coming in who are working, haven't got time to do the preparation. Then they rush it and the lace isn't as good as it could be. Nottingham is, is you know, synonymous with the lace making industry. It's got such a rich history in lace. Do you think that that's a, it's an art form, it's a, it's a trade that is gradually dying out and continues to? It's not dying out, but we've got to make sure it doesn't die out. Yeah. There are a lot of lace makers in Nottingham and the surrounding areas, mm. and I want to keep it that way. Joy, I imagine you'll be all back in Louise here. Yeah, all the way along the line. My dad was a twist hand in the lace industry. So, and that was a skilled job. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just lovely. I've seen some of the samples he used to bring home, but this is all handmade. It's not made by machines. You do it all by hand, yeah. don't you? Yeah. It's a totally different yeah. thing. It's amazing. Mm. Absolutely amazing. Is it, uh, let's just talk through some of the pieces. Do you mind if I pick these no. up? Is that all right? Let's go for it. So talk us through the amount of time and effort and skill that goes into making something like this. That's a piece of Flanders lace. Yep. There are all different styles of laces on here. Um, you start off, you prepare your pricking like this mm -hmm. by hand, you mark it up. Then you've got to wind all the thread onto individual bobbins. Then you start making the lace. You put the pins in and working the stitches, put more pins in. So you have, for example, this, can I just take this? It's almost like a diagram, isn't yeah. it? So you start That's off with that. Pattern. And then, so I'm trying to get my head around how it becomes I'll show this. you on the lace pillow. Let's, Let's do it on the lace. Well, talk little, us through what you've got here. This is a travel lace pillow. <laughs> yeah. It just packs up wow. into a little box. Look at that. Ah, opens up. It's like the TARDIS. <laughs> opens up to become the lace pillow. And this is a roller pillow to make an edging. And you just open it up. And all the threads are wound onto the bobbins ready to work. Well, that is amazing, isn't it? Joy, what do you think of that? Oh, it's amazing. It almost looks like an incredible collector's item. They can be collectors' mm -hmm. items, the bobbins. I've right, got what a tremendous collection. Of them. Buy, so I don't know where to start. You start in the pattern that's underneath. Those yes. bobbins are worth a fortune as well, aren't These they? These ones were made by my late father, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. they are very precious to me. But you start off, you look at the pattern that's underneath there, take them off the travel, and you get the pair of bobbins, and the next two to them, and you work a stitch with four bobbins. And it's just going round as you go. And you follow in the pattern that's underneath it. Now that, to me, looks like it requires years of training. You've only got to be able to count to four. There okay. are only two stitches. I can just about do that. Can I have a go? Yeah, sure. Let All me right. just undo that, that last one because that's the easiest stitch. I'll be really careful though. Okay. So, so I'll do it slowly. So I've got these four bobbins. You number them. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Put two over three. Two over three. Now two over one. Where's your count? Um, this up. one. And which one, sorry? Two over one. Two over one. Four over three. Four over three. And two over three. And two over three. Yeah, so that's the first stitch. You move that to one side and get the next two. And you just keep going? do the same again. Over and over? Yes. Wow! Are you, are you finding it difficult to engage young people? No, young people, if they actually try it, mm. they'll love it. Yeah. I've had some people this week having a go on video. Mm. Absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah. But it's the time constraint that's the problem with it, with younger people. They want things instantly. And the great thing about this, as, as I mentioned when I was introducing you, is that people who, who maybe have difficulty seeing, uh, you know, sight difficulties and any other disabilities might be able to get involved and really go for it. You can use magnifying glasses, artificial lights, whatever you need to actually be able to see the holes in the pattern. 
I don't know if you can see those holes. Yeah. I've I've known people with one hand with who's had a stroke yeah. be able to do it with one hand. Wow. You don't have to have both hands operational. Louise, first off, I already feel really relaxed. It, it seems very therapeutic to do. It is. Um, how do people get involved? There's lots of classes about. I teach in Nottingham yep. on a Monday afternoon at Sherwood. Yeah. That's one mm -hmm. class. I teach in Derby. I travel down to Leicester on a regular basis. Yeah travel throughout the country and into Europe this year. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming in. And can you do me a massive favour? Yes. Can you make Martin a lace t-shirt? <laughs> Which is one of That would be a little bit tight, though. How long have I got? <laughs> How long have I got? Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, now with more news from across the county, catch up with...